Let's take a look at the little rechargeable LED work light and power bank. And this is quite an odd design. And my apologies, I don't know if this is going to really make loud popping noises or not in the microphone, but it opens like this. And the middle bit also opens with loud clicking noises to give a light that can be pointed in multiple directions. It can be stood up on its end. It's very versatile. And you can get a fairly wide and controllable coverage of light. It's got a button in the back that enables both one or the other. It's kind of a crude way of dimming. It also means you can control which area gets illuminated, but it's uh, not got any pulse with modulation or dimming. I don't think it's got a strobe mode. Let me just hold the button in. No, it does not have a strobe mode. It just lights up. Okay. On the back, it also has this little uh, rubber cover revealing the battery level indicator. Does that light up? Yes, it does light up when uh, the thing is active. And it's rated for an output of 5 volt at 1 amp. I tested it at 5.2 uh, amp before it cut out. Uh, it also has, is that a USB-C input? I think it is. That's quite good. But anyway, let's take it apart. So I'm going to guess that... All the electronics will be in here, and are the batteries going to be in this bit, or are they going to be down the middle? Is it going to be 18650s? Because it does say 5000 milliamp power, and 2500 milliamp power is a fairly standard value for uh, an 18650. I could be wrong. I've not had it open, so I don't know what it looks like yet. We shall find out together. So I shall take the screws out and explore. I have to say that these have come on leaps and bounds since they first started appearing, and they are super useful. Now, which bit is a... Uh, it's these bits here, I'm going to guess, that these have to come out too. That kind of rules out the possibility of there being 18650s in the middle, because uh, there would be screws through them, and they don't generally like that. What's happening now? Is this going to come apart? Am I going to have to pause? Oh, that's still not coming apart. Does it clip together as well? Or is there something else? I don't know. Maybe all the screws have to be taken out. Or are there other screws down those holes? Oh, there are other screws down those holes. I think. I shall just keep taking the screws out. Until something falls apart. My apologies if this starts getting long. You can always skip to the bit where it's completely open. It always does take a little bit of time. And yet if I jump over these bits, people complain that they wanted to see how it came apart. So let's take it apart completely. Is there some other secret to this that I don't know? I may end up having to pause if this doesn't start coming apart quickly. It does feel kind of loose. It feels very loose. It still doesn't want to open, does it? Oh, that's good. So this slides off, apparently, like that. Is that going to make it come open? It feels better. It's making crunchy noises. It's not opening. Uh, or there, there we go. Oh, I wasn't expecting that, right? Uh, for reference, the front comes off like this. I don't see batteries in here. I see a completely sealed module around here with this big scuff in it. Uh, that has all the electronics under a cover in here. That's quite interesting. And it's got a connector at the end that connects to the other side. Let's keep taking screws out. And then I'll do the usual. I'll open the other side so we can see what sort of batteries are in it. But I'll also take a picture of the circuit board and we can analyse the circuitry. I'm not expecting any great surprises. I'm expecting a, a USB charge circuit and also just a simple microcontroller with uh, the button just switching two transistors. One for either side. This comes off. It's got the cob on it. Oh, I thought that was a connector. Oh, there are connectors underneath. Everything's in connectors. Okay, off comes this connector. These are kind of keyed. That just appears to be a waterproof seal, that white bit. Okay, out comes the circuit board. Four screws. Uh, That'll be the charge circuit. Oh, there's the, it's a power bank circuit. And there's the little microcontroller. All fairly stock. Uh, there's one, two, three, four transistors. Oh, are they in parallel? 
they might be in parallels. This spoilers if I tell you now, before I've even taken it out and analysed it. And I'm not expecting there to be much on the back of this circuit board, if anything. There's the two connectors, the USB-C, the button, uh, the standard USB outlet, outlet, some charge LEDs, pairs of them, uh, and then the connectors here. Right, tell you what, since all the screws are out, anyway, this is just falling apart left, right and centre now. Let's get these out and see if we can find the battery in it. Is this going to go back together again? Yes, it is. Okay, this comes off. It should come off. It's not coming off, is it? Revealing, oh, a flat pouch lithium cell under here. And uh, the cob. Is the cob pressing against it? No, there is space between the two of them for heat dissipation. Right here. One moment, please. I'm going to reverse engineer the circuit board. Reverse engineering is complete. Let's explore. So on one side of the circuit board, we have the USB-C connector. We have the USB output connector. We have the three connectors that connect to the two uh, LED cobs, cob arrays, and the one that connects the battery, which does have thermal sensing, which is quite interesting. We also have six LEDs, pairs of red and green uh, which are the red flashes to show uh, the level of charge. And when it's fully charged, it just switches all the greens on. I think they've just uh, left their options open. All the greens are lit right now, uh, but it's still taking a charge. More on that later. So this is one side of the circuit board. Uh, also a large area of ground plane. This is the other side. I also have to correct something I said in the first part of the video where I said I test the capacity at 5, the output current capability at 5.2 amps. No, it's 1.2 amps. I was thinking ahead when I said 5. So 1.2 amps and then it tripped. But that's okay. 1 amp output is fine for charging many things. The circuitry is based, rather predictably, around the little microcontroller. And they have used every single pin in this. And a dedicated power bank style chip. But it's been used in a bit of an odd way. And uh, also, the LEDs are being switched by pairs of AO90 MOSFETs in parallel, just, I guess, for increased current handling. I'm not sure what current it's actually switching them at. There is also another P-channel MOSFET, which appears to be disconnecting the battery from the USB circuitry. So maybe it's got quite a high quiescent current. It's just trying to get around that. I'm not sure why they're doing that. Or maybe it's just... I'm, no, I don't really know. I just a uh, shut-off so it doesn't over-discharge it. That's possibly it. Um, I shall let you take a look at the circuit board briefly and then I shall bring in the schematic for your entertainment. Oh, things worthy of note, a splodged resistor here. They've patched a resistor in. Oh, and a couple of inductors here for uh, filtering. This uh, resistor, they've just obviously missed one out. Interestingly, instead of putting it there, if they ran out of space in the design, which I doubt, I think they just accidentally left it off, they could have put it down here uh, to, between the pin 2 and the ground rail. Um, other things worthy of note, this pin is floating. That's quite an important thing that's worthy of note because that's a voltage programming pin on that chip. And if it's left to float, uh, it will try and charge a lithium cell to, cell to 4.35 volts. Uh, but the lithium cell does a protection, I believe. I shall find out because uh, the project is currently, well, the experiment is in progress. It's still charging at 700 milliamps, even though it stopped theoretically. Uh, charging it reached full charge a while ago. Interesting. We'll see what voltage that goes to. If it cuts off the internal chip, it'll be 4.25 volts, usually. So here is the uh, battery charging circuitry, which is using a standard power bank chip, an SP4533. It's just got two output LEDs, one to show when it's charging uh, the cell, and the other to show when it's uh, got a load and it's discharging. That would normally just control a red and a blue LED in the tiny little power banks. You know the ones that are like this sound of the compressor coming on in the background, not to worry. So notable things. The positive to this uh, actually comes from the battery. Comes via that transistor, that P-channel MOSFET. Um, I'm guessing the cell itself is protected um, and it can switch, it puts 
a continuous battery feed over to the microcontroller, but it also has a facility to uh, get a signal from the microcontroller bat control to uh, switch it. So this switched battery positive is actually just going here and through that filter circuit to the, uh, the boost inductor that steps the voltage up. The voltage is stepped up, it comes back out uh, to the USB output port. Note that I've written X3 next to these capacitors, that just means there's three of them in a row. Let me just show you that. These plated through holes are connected here, so one, two, three. And uh, for this one, for the incoming supply, it's one, two, and three before the inductor, and then another one afterwards. Lots of filtering, I wonder why they did that. Oh, you know what? I didn't fully colour this in. I feel obliged to colour it in now. Let's finish colouring it in. Blue for the negative. I use blue for the negative. It's just better to differentiate than black. Right. Okay. Uh, other things worthy of note. The data pins on the USB port, the output port, are just connected together, suggesting it is basically setting it as a one amp output type sort of thing, so that anything plugged into it will just see that. It's also worth mentioning the USB C in. Uh, there's no fancy circuitry to signal back to the device that is plugged in there to even put out power. Some devices won't put out power unless they see they're connected to a specific load. Usually the sort of on-the-go type uh, USB, I think. But in this case, it's just relying on a, a dumb lead being used in a dumb charger, just putting out five volts on a USB connector. There's no uh, programming resistors to tell it what it is. Other things, the unit signals to the microcontroller when it is actually charging the battery, and it also signals to the microcontroller when it's discharging, which will trigger this sort of the LED display. That's the resistor that was podged in at a funny angle, and upside down, I thought it was a capacitor initially, as extra filtering. The USB-C comes in, and it uh, goes straight to the chip, but there is a snubber across that just for filtering. 1.5 ohm in series of the capacitor, but there's also a 1K and a 10K resistor uh, forming a potential divider um, and uh, a pull-down resistor to the charge connected input to the microcontroller just to tell it that, you know, the USB-C is plugged in and to start its little blinky light show, which would also happen with uh, the charging and stuff like that. It may also signal if it's shut the MOSFET off, it may actually, if the battery was too low, I'm guessing it might be battery protection, not really sure. I've not been able to test that yet because it's a very fat battery and uh, it's going to take a while to do test like that. The microcontroller, the MCU, has a the supply from the battery, the permanent supply, not the switch one, uh, comes via a 10 ohm resistor and a capacitor for filtering. Uh, other things worthy of note there, there's a, also a resistive divider with a 300k resistor and a thermistor built into the battery pack with a filtering capacitor just to provide a stable uh, voltage from that. And that just tells the chip if the battery pack is overheating in some way. I guess that might be if it was getting too hot with the cob chip, maybe? I'm not really sure. I don't know uh, what their arrangement, why they're monitoring the temperature. Um, there are three 1K resistors going to LEDs uh, in pairs, and the way they've done it, they've used four lines to control six LEDs by swapping the polarity of this common. So if they wanted to display all reds, they'd make this negative and then light the appropriate number of reds via that by making them positive. If they wanted to display as they do at the end, all the greens, they just go static. They'll make this one positive and they'll just make all those negative. The switch is just a button bridging to ground. It's got internal pull-up in the microcontroller. And the control for the Cobb LED arrays is two of these in parallel, two AO90 MOSFETs, with a 1K resistor driving the gate and a 10K pull-down just to make sure it stays off when it's not getting a signal from the microcontroller. And this whole circuit here is repeated twice for the uh, other cob and that is it i'm just looking over at this thing no it's continuing to charge i shall leave a comment in the description down below telling you what voltage it charged up to i reckon it's going to charge up to the point it cuts off on the uh on the internal protection of the cell if it has it but if it goes higher i'll let you know what voltage it terminated at but that is it the uh Lidl uh, rechargeable 
power bank and work light. I mean, it's a sensible enough functional design. It's quite maneuverable. Also has magnets in, which is quite handy because all the screws are now stuck to them. And now um, I'm going to put it back together because it is quite a useful light. It's quite functional.